I was sitting right beside him and uh, Swami was playing with his hand and suddenly something came in his hand. Swami, you know, there was a beautiful diamond of this size. Then Swami said, this is the original no stud of Kanyaka Parmeshwari. The value of this diamond is 30 crores, he said. Then Swami looked at one boy at the corner there and said, Hey, what is your name? He said, Swami Srikanth. Hey, very disciplined boy. Very good. Catch, Parthava, catch. He threw it like this. It just went into thin air. Poof, it vanished. Then after that, Swami said a beautiful thing. What is the greatest reward that God bestows on a good seva worker? If you wear a scarf and stand near the door even for one hour, Swami said, I will take care of you for lifetime. हमें तुमसे प्यार कितना साई आप ही जानते अगर जी रहे हैं तो आपकी ही प्रेम के लिए हमें तुमसे प्यार सुना गम जुदाई का उठाते हैं लोग जाने जिंदगी कैसे बिताते हैं लोग छन भी यहाँ तो लगे बरस के समान हमें इंतजार कितना आपका प्रेम का अगर जी रहे हैं तो आपका ही प्रेम के लिए हमें तुमसे प्यार ऑफरिंग माय मोस्ट लविंग सैल्यूटेशंस एट द डिवाइन लोटस फीट ऑफ अ मोस्ट बेलेवलेंट भगवान my loving friend, my best friend, seeking his divine love and grace that needs to be showered on each one of us. Elders who are present here, my dear friend Srini, the State President of Mumbai West One, brothers and sisters, and my children of the National Leadership Program. Sairam to all of you, and of course, the generals of the Sai Army, the alumni of Sri Satsang Institute of Higher Learning, Sai Ram. I'm indeed blessed to be here today. I think uh, in my journey of Seva, I think, and my talks, the last on the list was Dharmakshetra, and Swami brought me here today with his benevolent blessings. Some wonderful incidents that happened in our family which I have seen personally, some very strong messages that Swami has sent out that needs to be shared with the society. And I'm assuring you that I will not try to bore you because I know very well that I am not speaking but he is going to speak today. So when he speaks, it is going to be fun and frolic. So how many of us actually believe that Swami is our best friend? Well, for me, Swami has been a best friend, Swami is a best friend, and Swami will be a best friend. The definition for a best friend for me is someone who actually is always there with you, doesn't ditch you, scolds you, puts you back into that plug where you have to be, and apna bhav bahut acha dikhate hain bhagwan apna bhav bahut acha dikhate hain jab marna hai thok thok ke marte hain and that is what my best friend is about so i'll start our journey my family journey and this is a very interesting incident a lot of us have heard from so many devotees saying that swami is this swami is that who is swami swami says i am shiva shakti swarupa but 
here is one incident that happened in a family. This is way back in 1960s, late 60s. To go back, my father was the collector of Chitor. I should uh, intimate all of you that my father was a very coveted IAS officer who was the chief secretary of Andhra Pradesh and uh, was born in Anantapur. He studied in Anantapur. He worked in Anantapur. And then he got into the civil services, but unfortunately, when he stayed there, he didn't know about Bhagwan Sri Sat Sai Baba. That is the irony of life. So when he was collector of Chitur, it so happened there were some riots in Chitur. And uh, as a district magistrate, he had to order firing. And five people were killed that day. And the entire town was very tense. They didn't know what would happen that night. And uh, my father also very tensed, he slept that day. I will stop here and then go a little fast forward. I am going to around 66, 67, when my father was transferred from Chitur and he was posted as a deputy commissioner of his own town, Anantapur. That was the time a deputy commissioner was in charge over the collector. He was in charge of the deputy commissioner for Karnul, Anantapur and Kadapa. Chitur, I'm sorry, three districts. And someone in, in his office came and told me, Sir, you are a very spiritual person. In fact, the first book on the Tirumala Temple, The Lord of Seven Hills, was written by my father. It's even a textbook for doctoral students even today about the rituals, architecture. He was an archaeologist, historian also. And uh, they came to him and said, There is a young Baba here in Puttaparthi. Would you like to go and see him? My father being a little religious, he said, why not? So arrangements were made and uh, uh, th those days there was a jeep. He went till Bukapatnam. From Bukapatnam they had to cross the Chitravati river and then come to the other side. On the other side Swami was uh, there and Swami told my father when he came there. My father is, was being called as Sita Ram. His name is Sita Pati. But Swami all through his life called him Sita Ram. After he retired as the chief secretary, he was also the chief public relations officers in the Prashant and Lilium handling presidents and prime ministers. And uh, Swami said, Sita Ram, I am also trying to bring in the Telugu dialect of Swami so that some of you can catch it very fast. He said, you have come, you must be tired now. Go and rest, I will talk to you in the evening. So my father was given some place to rest and uh, he was resting. In the evening, my father and Swami had two hours of interaction on a face-to-face -face interaction. And the interaction went on on different counts, but there were three pertinent questions that my father asked. He narrated, later, in fact, wrote this in a, one of his books also. The first question he asked is, no Swami, no Baba, nothing. Sir, you seem to be a pious holy yogi. And in your previous birth, they say that you were Shirdi Sai Baba. And if you are a reincarnate of Shirdi Avatar, in Shirdi Avatar, you wore tattered clothes, white clothes, stone, no chappal, nothing. But in this Avatar, it is very surprising to see that you are wearing silk clothes and silk dhoti. What is it? How is it there is a huge transition in one Avatar to another Avatar? And my father was waiting for Swami to answer this question. Swami said, Ni rendo sitapati. What is your second question? And it went on and my father said, Sir, okay, we are wearing silk clothes. Yogis and people who have left their, you know, who are not materialistic, I find very funny, you are, fine, you are wearing two gold buttons here. There are two gold buttons here. How is it that gold has come into your form? Then Swami immediately said, Ni mudo prashneti, what is your third question? He asked. And my father said, okay Swami, okay sir, I agree to this. Now, in your previous avatar, you were walking, you were going in a tonga, you bare feet, you were going. But surprisingly, I see that you are going in Mercedes cars in 1960s, imported vehicles, you are flying from one place to another person. What is happening here? It doesn't fit into the entire spectra of divinity or avatarhood. Then Swami smiled and asked, 
ఇంకేమైనా ప్రశ్నలు ఉన్నాయా డూ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎనీ మోర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ స్వామి ఆస్ట్ దెన్ మై ఫాదర్ సెట్ సార్ ఓన్లీ దీస్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఐ వాంట్ యూ టు ఆన్సర్ దెన్ ఇమీడియట్లీ స్వామి సెట్ సీతాపతి నువ్వు తిరుపతి మీద ఒక పుస్తకం రాస్తివి కదా సీతాపతి యూ రోట్ ఎ బుక్ ఆన్ ద టెంపుల్ ఆఫ్ తిరుపతి ఈజ్ ఇట్ నాట్ ఎస్ సార్ ఐ డెడ్ రైట్ సో మై ఫాదర్ వాజ్ థింకింగ్ ఐ బిలీవ్ ఇన్ ఇస్ హార్ట్ సమ్ క్యాంప్లర్ కూడ్ హ్యావ్ టోల్డ్ ఎమ్ అండ్ ఈస్ ఆస్కింగ్ మీ నార్మల్ హ్యూమన్ మెంటాలిటీ దట్ సౌ ఇట్ గోస్ దెన్ స్వామి సెడ్ యూ టెల్ మీ నౌ వాట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ క్లోత్స్ డస్ లార్డ్ వెంకటేశ్వర ఆన్ తిరుమల వేర్ the question was what kind of clothes does lord venkateshwara wear in tirumala then my father said swami there is a shastra there there is a particular silk clothes that is woven hand loom silk only that kind of vastrams are adorning the lord there in tirumala then swami and said and smiled then he said okay now you tell me what kind of jewelries and jewels does lord venkateshwara wear in tirupati then my father said swami vajravaiduriyal rubies and diamonds crowns and necklaces are adorning the lord venkateshwara there then swami continued to smile and said now i will ask you another thing your venkateshwara when the utsava vigram goes outside into the streets in tirumala how does it go then my father narrated that there was a beautiful chariot ratham that was gifted by sri krishna devaraya where thousand people have to pull it and only then it moves then swami said then he smiled and said oka rati vigrahame antha vaibhavam ga unte sakshat parabrahma swarupuni nen avatarichina pudu na vaibhavam ent undali he said he says when is idol which is made out of stone has got so much of grandeur and glory i am the sakshat parabrahma swarupa that has arrived on this earth what kind of grandeur and glory should i have that is what i am he said and he didn't stop there the beauty of the story goes like this then he said now you tell me sitaram on that particular day when you ordered firing in chitur what happened in the night at 130 my father was a little surprised then he strictly regret swami swami said i will tell you wait you are very scared what will happen there was so, so much of tension in chitur and at that point of time did not venkateshwara appear in your bedroom in human blood did he not tell you to take roddam prabhakar rao the superintendent of police and arrest seven people did you not go that night and ar- arrest those people who do you think came that night to help you i was the one who came to help you he said so imagine this friend of ours you know he can go out anywhere he can help you any time you know we talk of atms and everything you know this avatar is an atm who comes to our help provided we surrender to him this is the most important thing now coming back to certain things that i wanted to i don't know how many of you have heard of professor nanjundaya professor nanjundaya is a former controller of examinations and he was also swami's translator i had an interaction with him and uh, the interaction goes like this i believe swami was travelling from puttaparthi to whitefield in his mercedes car ada 90 i'm very particular about numbers because i keep them as a track this is history his story so when he was travelling as they were just passing by kotacharu i believe there were lot of slogans being raised on the road this was the year 1980 in fact i got it documented from professor nanjundaya himself you know i wrote it down then swami suddenly looks at it em jarugutundi swami asks what is happening then nanjundaya said swami elections are on and the slogan swami they are raising slogans and uh, swami asked nanjundaya who do you think will win swami is asking professor swami i think in my town congress is likely to win swami mm-hmm. then immediately taking the opportunity nanjudey asked swami swami who do you think you will, who will win swami swami said i don't care about elections and thing i don't have my own cabinet i am not involved in all these things 
then nanjudaya sir said swami if something good happens in life i am sure it is the will of yours but if something happens bad i think it goes according to cosmic laws is it true swami he asked i believe now i said no 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 you are ab- absolutely wrong everything in this universe runs according to my will my law only but i have departmental heads for each of the department i don't get into their departments but three departments i handle it myself he went on to say and then very inquisitively professor nanjudai asked him swami what are these three departments he says first thing is whosoever has niswartha prema that means selfless love anybody who has selfless love who loves me wholeheartedly i love him totally wholeheartedly in return swami's words is i do not pay any attention to the weakness of that person but i love him 100% first thing selfless love the second thing swami spoke about was nishkama karma that is selfless love swami says whosoever performs selfless seva i accept him and guide him under my personal protection this is point number 2 point number 3 swami says who server does nitya sadhana who is doing regular sadhana he is always under my protection these three category of people are under my direct blessings and grace is what swami mentioned so brothers and sisters what a great great thought you know that we all have to imbibe from this selfless love selfless service and nitya sadhana i will like to share with you an incident that happened in my own family my wife's uh, mama is uh, one mr satyanarayana who is a, one of the owners of the amrutanjan company you know the amrutanjan the big company in chennai he has never seen swami he has seen swami he has never spoken to swami he has never touched swami he has not had pad namaskaram in his life perhaps the gentleman used to sit in the last row of cyclevent hall see swami's car pass by is happy and he used to go back that was the kind of gentleman always post his retirement the only thing that he would do is read swami's literature for 7 to 8 hours continuously reading swami's literature it so happened one day they have in their own apartment they have a exclusive room for swami if there's a bed there's a air conditioner there's a huge photograph you'll be surprised to know that you know the fan is switched on in the night the air condition is switched off in the night it so happens you know that swami is as if he's personally physically sitting there it so happened at 4:30 one day morning my masi who is uh, his wife came and knocked our door and said mama is having some trouble he is not able to pass urine and he is in great pain i am from the medical fraternity i knew this was a problem of prostate gland the moment you are not able to pass urine it's prostate gland so immediately i went he was in very deep pain i told him uncle don't worry i'll rush you i called my friend dr anil anil mulpur i called him i said ka bhai tu he said i am there in sunshine hospital you come over we'll see immediately so my mama was sitting sleeping in the car in my back seat me and my wife were driving to the hospital i was passing through tangband in hyderabad husain sagar suddenly there's a car coming from opposite direction and there's somebody waving his hand at me and i'm also waving his hand you know waving back thoda dur aage jaane ke baad suddenly i saw who is this guy waving hand to me then my wife said that's dr sanjay the urologist she was telling me i said my god this guy is the urologist this is the guy i'm looking for so immediately i called him turned back his hospital was very near by i went to his hospital i told him this is the dr sanjay who is swami's student actually he passed he he did his 12th till 12th in higher secondary school he looked at him he immediately did some tests and he came back within one hour and said gopi i am very sorry to tell you he has got prostate cancer we'll have to take up an emergency surgery and this is what it is the psa readings were very very high and it was then uh, we didn't know how to tell our masi how how about it she she was also pretty elderly lady 
So I came back and told my wife, no, we will tell her, don't worry. Let the doctors take it forward. And uh, as this was happening, I told my wife that, you know, why don't I go and tell Swami about it? It's my duty to go and tell Swami. So I took a bus that night, reached Prashant Nilayam. I was sitting, Swami came in the veranda. Swami was in a wheelchair at the time. He came. And as soon as he came, I got up on my knees. Swami said, Yemi, what? I said, Swami, my mama is hospitalized. They said, the doctor said that he has prostate. I went up to prostate. Swami said, Nen choose kunta. He cut me out with the word of prostate and he said, Nen choose kunta. And he went off. Then I didn't know I was supposed to stay back and re re plead or what I didn't know I came back home and next day was the operation and uh, the doctor was ready he said you know we're going to operate in the morning and believe it or not before the operation they again went for a scan and they also went for a PSA test the PSA was normal the scan didn't show any prostate problem and absolutely he lived 14 years after that now, why am I telling you this? The reason why I am telling you this, we always say, Om Sri Sai Bhaktavatsalaya Namaha. One who loves his devotees. You need not be very close. You need not touch him. You need not speak to him. You can have darshan from the hundredth row. Yet, Swami's eyes are on you and he takes care of you. There is a beautiful poem that Swami says, Aduvalayandunna Adavulayanduna Akashamanuna Patanamulanuna Palenuna Guttami the Nuna Nate Tanadamanuna Viduvadu Ninu Isai Bakthulara Viduvadu Ninu Isai Bakthulara Swami says, You were in the middle of a jungle or in the remotest village, or in a town, or on a hillock, or in the middle of the ocean. Let me tell you, I will never let go my devotees. We may forget Swami, but Swami will never ever forget. This is something that we have to take it forward. Now coming to Nishkama Karma, selfless love. For all of us, you know, in the Satsai organization, the alumni, we are all involved in, in selfless work always. Let me tell you my story. I joined the organization when I was around 17 years old. You know, there was a winter course in Indian culture and spirituality in Hyderabad, where Swami sent a couple of his students to speak. And uh, I was pushed by my father to get into the course. Otherwise, my father thought I was a gone kid. I would have been a rowdy shooter. I am confessing in front of Swami. So I had that kind of friendship. But by force, I was sent into this course. And the course of three days actually opened a new chapter in my life. So, looking at the Seva Dal, I felt that urge that I should also serve. So, I went to Shivam, signed up as a pre-Seva Dal. And the first uh, designation or position that I was given to work with, I was made the CCS. You must be thinking CCS is... Uh, Chief of Armed Service, of Chief of Corporate Services. No, I was made the Chief of Chappal Staff. My job was to look after Chappals. And being a son of an IS officer, imagine the ego within me was telling me, Kisi ka Chappal tu utha ke rack me lagayega? Mere ghar pe teen char naukar hai. Jo mere jute polish karte te, mein office school ko jata ta, door khulte te. Mai kis ka Chappal uthao mai? And I was avoiding, there were two other guys, you know, who were doing it. I was avoiding, avoiding the whole thing. That evening, it so happened, a very elderly person, about 70, 75 years, he walked up to the chapel stand and he called me and said, Will you remove my footwear and keep it in the rack? He was not able to bend. Now, this was a dilemma. If I bend and take the chapel, some friends of mine will see me and taunt me, Tu chuppal ka kaam karta rahe tu? Kya karta hai tu? So this was haunting me. So but that gentleman was waiting, so I thought, let me go. I went, removed the chuppal, took it in my hand 
and i was just walking back then he called me he patted me on my back and he said he put his hand on my head i tell you from there on that hand i believe today even today i feel it is bhagwan's hand i never turn back to do any kind of a work that is given to me so swami tests you when you burn that ego within you swami really takes you to greater heights of self realization now i know that i was mentioning to brother lakshmikant also we were all seated as hyderabad youth group you know it was introduced that i was a part of the hyderabad youth group it is all his glory there is nothing that we have done so we were all seated in the cyclone hall swami was giving pad namaskaram to the entire group then swami told me you walk along with me so i was walking along with swami so the last person was actually to take pad namaskaram then one boy who is now in london sunil he got up and asked swami swami please give us an opportunity to serve then swami said ipudu em chestunnaru ra meeru what are you doing now he said swami put seva chestunnaru swami swami said inka iyandi swami give me more opportunities to serve swami then swami said beautiful thing swami said meeru na seva chestu pondi chestu pondi chestu pondi ee sai mee seva chestu potadu chestu potadu chestu potadu he said you continue to do my seva 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 i this sai will continue to do your seva your seva your seva so that is the beauty of seva now coming to that how many of us actually i know a lot of elders are here how many of our elders or members of the organization who are senior ask our children to come and actually work in the organization a lot many of us because of what has happened to us and our pitfalls are in the organization or sometimes we keep ourselves our children away from the organization but let me tell you there was an incident when swami said i am telling you today if you wear a scarf and stand near the door even for one hour even for one hour swami said i will take care of you for lifetime lifetime he said that so my request is those of you who only come for bhajans bhajan is also seva those who don't come for seva please take some time off from your busy schedules kuch bhi kaam karo the gentleman with uh, the chairman of andhra bank was there uh, i forget is a gopal rao garu who was a 100 years old man swami announced in cycle went all once saying that gopal rao every day goes to the canteen and serves water for 20 minutes Swami sitting in Prashantilliam is talking of Gopal Rao hundred years. Swami said hundred, but he still does seva. And that day it was so surprising. That moment Swami said that in the cycle with all all the elders of the organization came to the canteen to serve water. Everybody came. So, but it has to be a continuous thing, and that is what Swami looks for. And the mode and Swami, in fact, we had asked Swami, Swami, what should be the attitude with which we do, should do seva? Swami said, "I'll narrate a beautiful story." The story goes this, and Swami said, "Yakkar keli na, e story chappara." He said, "Wherever you go, you narrate this story. I am taking the story now, live for you all of you." Swami said, "A sadhu was walking along the banks of the Bukkapatnam tank. As he was walking, I believe in the marshy lands of the Bukkapatnam tank, a lamb was stuck." in the marshy land it was trying to get out of the marshy land and there were about four or five youngsters who were sitting on the bun and pelting stones on the lamb and swami says the lamb was in a dilemma it was trying to get scot free from the marshy land and at the same time trying to avoid the throw stones that are being thrown at him so as this sadhu was walking he suddenly saw that and he removed his jubba swami is saying he removed his jubba he ran into the marshy land picked up the lamb on his shoulders and let it go scot free and these boys who were actually there he they came up to this sadhu and said you think you are a very big hero we were having our entertainment you spoiled our entertainment and how is it that you know you let that lamb out of that we were pelting stone we were having a good time then the yogi what he said was something very very important that swami narrated the yogi said i believe 
No, no, brothers. I did not try to save that lamb. I never tried to do that. As I was walking, I saw the lamb. The lamb was in a great pain there. And when that lamb was trying to avoid the stones and was also trying to avoid the marshy land to get out, my heart started aching. He said, Swami said, my heart started aching. Na hrudayamuloni bada nivrutti cheskodani ki nenu veli kapaditini. Swami says, exact Telugu words. In order to alleviate the pain in my heart, seeing that incident, I went and saved that. I did not do any heroic deed. Swami says, this should be the attitude of doing seva for every seva in our organization. What a beautiful story, what a beautiful message. So this is something that we have to always think about. And the journey with Swami is always a beautiful one. I'm sure every one of us has an up, has a down. Everyone who is seated can reach, each of you write a Bhagavatam. One Bhagavatam we know, but if the, all the side devotees together start writing their own experiences, I think this hall or this Dharma Kshetra will not be enough. It will be volumes of books, you know, that you can really write. So, <laughs> this happened, uh, uh, this once happened and you know, I was just talking to the youngsters also. What does Swami see basically in all of us? There was once an interview that uh, two groups, Mumbai and Hyderabad youth group, both had together. And uh, one of the Mumbai boys asked Swami, Swami, why do you like this Hyderabad boys so much, Swami? Why do you call them so frequently? So this is a very difficult question. Very, And in the presence of God, you know, this question is being asked. Why are you calling them? Then uh, Swami looked at me. He said, I said, Swami, I am not going to speak about it. Swami said, Chappu, Chappu. Then Swami asked me to sell. He said, Swami, in my thought, I think there are two reasons, Swami, I said. Swami, Chappu, he said. Swami, you have aparamayana prema undi, Swami, Mami. You have a eternal love that you shower on all of us. That is why you call us so many times. He said, Swami, Satyam, he said. Then, Rendo, Rendo, the intra. Then, Swami, you are looking at our unity, Swami. Then Swami said, wherever there is unity, wherever there is love, I am physically present there, Swami said this. And this is something very, very important as devotees of Satyasai that we need to carry forward. And there's a beautiful story that I've narrated many a time. This is a very interesting story. Uh, so most of us know when we go as a group to Prashantinilyam, we sit as a group and Swami used to come, beautiful style, holding his dhoti like this, he walks up and he says, how many? That is the favorite word that Swami has. How many? So Swami normally comes like that and asks. He doesn't ask in Telugu. Huh? He always asks in English. Swami came and asked, how many? So normally in our groups, you know, we have one statistical officer whose duty is to count how many are there so that when Swami asks this, we have to answer that question. So that particular time, we were about 40 of us and Swami came and he said, how many? Then uh, we said, Swami, we are 40, Swami, expecting Swami to call us. Swami looked at us. He went one step forward. He said, wrong, Ra, you are wrong, Swami said. We were, we were looking back, looking at that guy who was a statistical officer. Tu kya galti kar diya, tu swami ke paas. Then Swami smilingly said, eh, nenu lenu mi toti, am I not there with you? Swami says, am I not there with you? We are saying, Swami, 41, 41, jab tak Swami drr chale ge. Swami left. And this was a great lesson for us. So Swami is there with us. So a couple of months later, we were all seated there. Swami comes walking again. We were about 45 of us be there. This time we knew the answer. Swami will come and ask, how many? 45 plus 1. So Swami came very beautifully with that mischievous smile of his, that smile that he has there. He came and he said, Yemi, how many? He said. So Swami, we are 45 Swami, with you we are 46 Swami. Swami takes a step forward, smiles and says, wrong Ra. He says wrong again. And we were, surprised. what did we go wrong, where did we go? Swami smilingly, mischievously, hey, am I not there with each one of you? 
ప్రతి ఒక్కడితో ఉన్నాను నేను సో ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ ప్లస్ ఫార్టీ ఫైవ్ యూ ఆర్ షౌటింగ్ నైంటీ నైంటీ స్వామి చెలగే స్వామి లెఫ్ట్ దిస్ టైమ్ యూ నో వీ ఆర్ వెరీ వెరీ కేర్ఫుల్ నౌ వీ నో దిస్ ఆన్సర్స్ పేపర్ లీక్ హో గా సబ్ సెట్ అయ్యి స్వామి ఇట్ వాస్ జాన్వరి ఐ థింక్ ద మంత్ ఆఫ్ జాన్వరి వీ ఆర్ ఆల్ సీటెడ్ దేర్ వీ వర్ సిక్స్టీ టూ ఆఫ్ అస్ సిక్స్టీ త్రీ ఆఫ్ అస్ వీ వర్ దేర్ స్వామి కేమ్ వెరీ మిస్చ్యూవస్లీ వీ కుడ్ యూ కెన్ సీ స్వామి ఇస్ మిస్చ్యూఫ్ ఆన్ హిస్ స్మైల్ యూ నో ఇట్స్ సో బ్యూటిఫుల్ స్వామి స్టార్టెడ్ వాకింగ్ క్లోదర్ అండ్ హీ కేమ్ ఏమి హౌ మెనీ అన్నారు దెన్ వెరీ బ్యూటిఫుల్ యూ సెట్ స్వామి వీ ఆర్ సిక్స్టీ త్రీ విత్ ఈచ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ అస్ యూ ఆర్ దేర్ విత్ అస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ ట్వంటీ సిక్స్ స్వామి స్వామి స్టేక్స్ వన్ స్టెప్స్ ఫార్వర్డ్ బ్యాక్వర్డ్ సెట్ ఏమి రా తప్పు రాంగ్ అండ్ వీ ఆర్ వండరింగ్ వాట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ దట్ వీర్ స్వామి సెట్ ఎన్ని తూర్లు వస్తున్నారా హౌ మెనీ టైమ్స్ యూ బీన్ కమింగ్ టు మీ డోంట్ యూ నో వీ ఆర్ ఆల్ వన్ రా మనం అంతా ఒక్కటే వీ ఆర్ వన్ స్వామి సేజ్ యూ నో అండ్ వాట్ ఎ బ్యూటిఫుల్ మెసేజ్ ఇట్ టుక్ ఎస్ టైమ్ ఫర్ అస్ టు రియలైజ్ వాట్ స్వామి వాంటెడ్ టు టెల్ అస్ ద ఫస్ట్ టైమ్ వెన్ ఈ టోల్డ్ అస్ we realized that swami was talking about dvaitam atma and parabatma so second time swami was talking about vishishta dvaitam man atma and also the universe and then the third time swami came to the final consciousness where swami said i am the one i am the supreme you and i are one aham brahmasmi swami went to that stage what a beautiful lesson that swami gave us you know and this is what as satyasai devotees we have to realize in the eyes of bhagwan all of us are his children and all of us are one there is we only talk about sometimes you know we are beyond caste creed region religion all these things we talk about it but in practicality i think the need is very very high that we should and we must practice this term of being one so when this is said when we talking about one swami also narrates this beautiful poem aikamatyame balamu andari kshemambu enta karyamaina negavachu chinna chimalu jeri sarpambu nu batti champutundutaleda jagati andu aikamatyame balamu swami says unity is strength don't you see in this world tiny ants catching hold of a serpent and killing it tiny ants catching hold of a serpent and killing it so swami says be united be united be united this is one beautiful story that i wanted to talk about it there are so many things that swami has in fact shared uh, in our family and i have seen personally some wonderful miracles i do not know how many of you know dr vyageshwarudu vyageshwarudu was the one of the most popular orthopedic surgeons of the country if there are any medical doctors here i am sure uh, you would know dr vyageshwarudu the book of orthopedics the textbook that you all learn is written by him dr vyageshwarudu so you will be surprised to note that uh, he had an organization of which which swami had blessed it very profusely called the satyasai polio foundation and he was going around the country actually <coughs> uh, doing the polio corrections and it so happened when i was doing my masters in tamil nadu agriculture university uh, the local samiti sachidanandam uncle came and said you know sir professor yagreshwarudu is doing some surgeries can some of your post graduates come and help us out in that arrangements so we went with about 150 students to serve so since i was a telugu guy i was posted next to dr vyagreshwarudu and he was conversing with me in telugu you will not believe we started operating at 6 o'clock he went up to 11 o'clock in the night and dr vyagreshwarudu did 302 operations that day 302 surgeries he had a team of six doctors they used to open it up he used to correct it and they used to suture it 302 and during that time when he used, he had his lunch he was narrating a beautiful incident you know do we need to call swami by his name or do you need to how do you pray to swami is a beautiful lesson from this story i believe dr vyagreshwarudu and his sanilla they were traveling on a road towards the port area of vizag he was from vishakhapatnam those of you who are from vishakhapatnam will know there is a port there there is an unmanned gate you have to cross that and go 
So Dr. Vagreshadu went there and he was coming back. And they were discussing suddenly something. Suddenly as they came, they saw that the train was passing by. It was an unmanned gate and there was a collision. Normally what happens when you hit a train? The, the, the car is gone. You know, imagine a train is going and you go and dash against the train, you're gone. So, it so happened that the train stopped there. Dr. Vyagriyashadu was, door was open. He was on one side on the ground, lying down. And his son in law door was open. A, he was lying on the other side. And all of them, the people gathered and they were saying, surprised, you know, what happened? And the train went, the headlight went and touched the train. The left side headlight broke. And this is the story. So they, they, they realized they were quite okay and they went back, they went to the nearest workshop, I believe. They told that workshop guy, mechanic, sir. Uh, then he asked, how, what did it happen? This guy, doctor said, I believe, I went and backed against a train. And the mechanic thought that this doctor was drunk. He went train ko mara aur headlight tuta hai bas and uh, they got it repaired and they came back. Three months later, Dr. Vyagreshadu was telling me, Swami called him for an interview and Swami was talking to him about operations and so on. Then suddenly he, Swami said, Ye me aroj karu. Ye, How come you, you were driving like that, that night in Vizag? You were discussing with your son-in-law, you didn't see the train. And Swami was telling him. Then uh, suddenly Vyagreshadu recollected, my God, this is what done. Then asked Swami, Swami is asking, what happened? Do you know? Swami, I will tell you. You saw the train coming. You were about to go and back the train. You left the steering and you called out, Amma! You started, shouted. And do you know what happened? When you shouted, Amma, I had to arrive there. I had to open the door pull you out and put you here, open the other door, pull out your son and put him out there. In the meantime, a fraction of a second I delayed, the headlight went and hit the train, Swami is saying. So imagine, whichever name you call him, whether you call him mother, father, whatever name you call him, provided you have that feeling that Swami is within you, he will answer. He will answer. I have a similar incident that I want to share with you. I was, uh, my father was working as the secretary to the chief minister of Andhra Pradesh. Chenaradi was the chief minister. And uh, Chenaradi was going to Delhi and my father was supposed to join him. He was looking at some files. By the time the message came that the chief minister is already moving towards the airport. So my father said, go, go, let's go. So father said, you drive the car. It was a government car. So I was driving. My father was seated in the next seat. We were passing by the same tank bun. And I was going at 70 kilometers per hour, driving fast because my father has to be before the CM there to receive him, protocol. So we were going there. In the meantime, so happened that as I was passing one vehicle, I overtook one vehicle. From the opposite direction, I was seeing a Matador van coming in. It just, just a split second, maybe two, three seconds, I hit the Matador van. I am gone. My father is gone. We are dead. On the tankman, it's a direct collision. No chance at all. Absolutely no chance. My father suddenly sees and says, Hey Gopi, say your prayers, he said. Very smart father I have. He said, say your prayers, you're gone now. I left the steering. I said, Sairam. I closed my eyes and said, Sairam. I opened my eyes, my car is going forward and the Matador van is going behind. It was so surprising. Was it a dream? Was it, was it reality? We didn't know. We went back, you know. About five, six months later, the entire Hyderabad youth group was sitting. Swami was talking about youngsters. He was telling us, every youth should learn Eta and Gita. Eta is swimming, Gita is Bhagavad Gita. So Swami was giving us instructions and Swami was telling, each one of you learn karate. You should know how to have karate, martial arts you should learn. I know some directions that we got was very vague from Bhagavan. But we did learn that was a different story. So during that interaction, Swami said, how many of you can drive? So I was sitting right beside Swami. So I kept myself sh shut. You know, I know what it is. So Swami was asking some boys raise their hands and Swami looked at me. Amy, why you are not raising your hand? 
స్వామి దాని స్వామి సెట్ ఏం చేస్తావు సాయిరామ్ కా వదిలేస్తావు స్టీరింగ్ యూ లీవ్ సాయిరామ్ యూ సే అండ్ లీవ్ ద స్టీరింగ్ దెన్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు కమ్ సేవ్ యూ అండ్ స్వామి సెట్ ఐ జస్ట్ హిట్ ఇట్ లైక్ దిస్ ద మెటర్ వ్యాన్ వెంట్ దట్ సైడ్ స్వామి సెట్ సో వాట్ ఐ ఆమ్ ట్రై టు టెల్ యూ ఇస్ దిస్ లాడ్ సేవ్స్ యూ యూర్ ఈజ్ అ గ్రేట్ సేవియర్ ప్రొవైడెడ్ యూ ఆల్సో లిజన్ టు హిమ్ ఐమ్ సమ్ కౌంట్స్ తోడా తో ఫాలో కరనా పడేగా హీస్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ లవ్ హీస్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ లవ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఇన్సిడెంట్స్ ఇన్ మై ఫ్యామిలీ యూ నో వేర్ స్వామి మై బ్రదర్ లా అండ్ సిస్టర్ వేర్ అటాక్ బై ఎ గోస్ట్ ఇన్ సౌత్ వేల్స్ ఇన్ లండన్ యూ విల్ నాట్ బి హీ బిలీవ్ ఎ మెహోగనీ వుడ్ గాడ్ విచ్ ఫోర్ పీపుల్ ఈవెన్ కాంట్ లిఫ్ట్ ఇట్ సడన్లీ రోజ్ అప్ ఇట్ స్టార్టెడ్ మూవింగ్ ఇన్ ద తిన్ ఎయిర్ అండ్ ఇట్ వాజ్ ఎ డ్రెడ్ఫుల్ డ్యామ్ ఆ స్వామి సెట్ ఐ సేవ్డ్ యూ దట్ డే so swami saves people my my both my sister and my brother in law were doctor are doctors and they regularly do medical gams so swami saves you when do you say say this is what i want to tell you about well uh, i do not when i talk about swami as love uh, most of us have uh, read about uh, frank baronski the kirlian camera lot of us know about the kirlian camera where the aura of an individual can be measured <coughs> so i had the opportunity of interviewing one gentleman called acharya sashidhar reddy you can google him this gentleman is the president of the indian pranic healing association he is a pranic healer basically and his guru who is a grand master of pranic healing is a gentleman called chok chui sui his name he is a malaysian and a very very well known figure who is no more he died in 2007 i think so one day i believe this gentleman chok sui called sashidhar reddy and said do you know somebody called satya sai baba he called him i believe then this guy said ah i know there is one butta baba in there he has got a lot of hair you know he does some kind of miracles there are frenzy devotees they do that they do this everything i never go that side and he was telling all those things out to him then chok sui says no 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 i am coming to india i am arriving day after tomorrow in bangalore i want to go and see him then sashidhar reddy was very very surprised why does chok sui who is sitting somewhere in malaysia is talking then he asked him what is it no recently i don't know how many of us know i believe all the yogi gurus leaders everybody once in a year the yogi siddha purushas i believe they meet in a place called sambala in himachal pradesh this is the thought that they have so all you know even mahavatar baba all these people come there i believe this is what shridhar reddy was telling us it is documented so shridhar reddy was saying one particular meeting the entire congregation of yogis of every faith who were there swami was actually the chairperson who was coordinating the entire activity giving directions what is to be done so this choksui wanted to meet this gentleman so he came to puttaparthi and this choksui has this uh, the physical ability to look at a aura so for a normal being i believe it's about 2 feet for a siddhi purusha it is about 4 feet 5 feet he talks he talked about it you know and uh, the maximum aura of a yogi who has got phenomenal powers is about 8 feet or so i believe when choksui landed in bangalore and when they started moving to puttaparthi in a car Chokshui could feel a pink light hitting him and he was wondering where is this light coming for and he started looking at ye light kahan se aa raha hai this is what he asked the reddy where is it where are we going why is this light coming and hitting me directly and as they moved towards puttaparthi the light pink light became very bright and darker and darker and then he said i believe pink is a form of pure love i am surprised i have never seen in my life such light emanating from a single person and he said i am waiting to see this person who this satsai baba is i want to see him so he, he they came they asked for accommodation the choksui they gave him a room in south prashanti some room with one bed and they stayed there sajdar was telling me he is one of the top most guys the accommodation office they didn't give a good room and all this thing but anyway they were said choksui was very happy it so happened the next day he was seated in the veranda swami came looked at him anjan swami knows na swami is so beautiful at doing certain things swami came didn't see him just walked off 
and the sishidhar vetty was getting annoyed he was sitting in the, the cycle with hall his guru had come is a united, international figure and swami is not looking at him he just walked off then he came back and said what is this your satsai baba has not spoken you should put my guru in a more important position so that he looks at him poor fellow didn't know that nobody can do anything in prashantila unless he feels it so he, next day i believe swami walked up and he stood in front of chaksui he looked at chaksui swami smiled at him and chaksui looked at him gazed at him like that swami was smiling nothing no gestures no talk nothing as he was looking at chaksui sashidhar reddy who is sitting diagonally opposite is saying swami in a dattatreya form looking at chaksui suddenly he sees dattatreya standing there and chaksui sitting there and this guy got up i believe what is this suddenly i see this kind of thing and immediately they came darshan hoya then chaksui said i have seen the lord of the universe today i know who this bhagwan sri sat sai baba is my life is done my mission is over that's what he said and he went back i believe and he wrote that every yuga if one person comes onto this universe like this like bhagwan sri sat sai baba the entire world will change he said i believe so imagine how blessed we are how blessed we are in a place like mumbai where i don't know Two crores or three crores population, or more than that, I don't know how it is. Four crore, get there. Only a few lakhs of devotees. Only a handful of people can come and sing bhajan. A handful of people can come and sing vedam. We should realize that we are so blessed. We are hand picked by Bhagwan. Swami once when I was I was narrating in Cycle Mandir Hall also recently. Swami told me, "Idni konna." vandaladi 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 janmala sukram this is the fortune of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birth that you are all sitting here you have been picked by swami hand picked so blessed we are all are so that's the story of it so swami otherwise also is very very strong you know and uh, he can be very very i know one shirinjivra uncle came and told me no eppudu swami prema swarupa all of you know thing swami is prema swarupa you have not seen swami's ugra swarupa he is like narsimha avatar he said when swami gets i think nimish bhai knows you know when swami gets angry he is fire god so i'll tell you an incident is a very funny incident but to lighten the whole story we had gone there to puttapardi and swami normally used to come and say hello how how are you what are you doing this way that swami ignored us for 3 days totally अब बच्चे पूरे देवर देंगे अरे क्या है सच साहब बाबा देता भी नहीं है कुछ बोलता भी नहीं इतना सेवा करके आए कुछ तो खातिरदारी करना है ना स्वामी वॉज नॉट लुकिंग एट एस सो इट वॉज इलेवन ओ क्लॉक इन द नाइट एंड वी वेर इन साउथ सेवन थर्ड फ्लोर सी एंड वी वेर ऑल टॉकिंग नेक्स्ट डे स्वामी कम्स इन द मॉर्निंग ही इज वॉकिंग टूवर्ड्स एस इज राउडी गैंग राउडी गैंग राउडी गैंग देन वी थॉट दैट समथिंग इज रॉन्ग नाउ बिकॉज स्वामी सेंग राउडी गैंग समथिंग इज है and said hey po then he said go so all of us went inside we were seated swami was talking to us on different terms you know and suddenly he looks at me and he says ye mera what re you are scolding me in the night why are you scolding me in the night he said i said swami maine kab bola swami maine kab gali diya i didn't even realize that i hey ratri 11 gandal ki nannu tittaledu light at never clock in the night did you not scold me పొట్టివాడు పని లేదు పాలిటీషియన్స్ ఐ సెట్ ఐ సెట్ దిస్ షార్ట్ మ్యాన్ ఫైవ్ ఫుట్ టూ ఇంచెస్ ఓ దేఖతా వినే అప్నే ఓ పాలిటీషియన్స్ కు బులాతా ఇంటర్వ్యూ కు జో కామ్ కర్తా ఉంకు నే బులాతా ఏ బోల్ రా తా మై అండ్ స్వామి పిక్ అప్ దట్ ఐ సెట్ హౌ ప్యూరెస్ట్ ఫామ్ ఇన్ ద యూనివర్స్ రా ప్యూరెస్ట్ ఫామ్ స్వామి టు హెల్డ్ ఇస్ జుబ్బా లైక్ దిస్ అండ్ ఐ సెట్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద ప్యూరెస్ట్ ఫామ్ ఇప్పుడు వరకు ఒక్క తప్పు కూడా లేదు ఈ అవతారంలో నాట్ అ సింగిల్ మిస్టేక్ హ్యావ్ డన్ నాట్ అ సింగిల్ మిస్టేక్ హీస్ డన్ ఇమాజిన్ ఇఫ్ వి ఆర్ విత్ దట్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఎ అవతార్ హౌ బ్లెస్డ్ వి ఆర్ అండ్ స్వామి ఈజ్ యు నో స్వామి లైక్స్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ టు బి ఇన్నోవేటివ్ ఐ టెల్ యూ మై స్టోరీ ఆఫ్ మై యంగ సన్ దిస్ ఈస్ లిటిల్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ సమ్టైమ్స్ ఈవెన్ టుడే మై యంగ సన్ యు నో పుల్స్ మీ అప్ బ్యాడ్లీ ఆన్ దట్ my younger elder son was named by swami that is a big story 
and he said when my second son was born swami said i will name him 75th birthday came swami very sweetly said nen ippudu poojalu cheyadamu perlu pettadamu pellilu cheyadam manestini i have stopped naming everything i stopped now then i caught hold of his and said swami aap to chhod diye you have left it but tomorrow think of it swami there will be a nuclear bomb in my home the elder one will say younger one will say how come that fellow was named by swami i was not named by swami garbad ho jayega na swami please so continuously we went about 5 6 months we were going so when you go with children you will have to take a pressure cooker dal pura leke jaate the swami used to come towards my wife medalize vibhuti give it to her put it on that fellow's head and go off then uh, he used to come and say ni kodku ni chusti ni i saw your son there he used to say ऐसे ऐसे स्वामी एक नाम लगा दो ना एक नाम लगा दो हमारे बच्चे भी जो ग्रुप के सब पूछते स्वामी वन नेम स्वामी वन नेम सो देन यू नो ही गेव मी ए ब्रेन वेव सो इट इज ऑल हिज डूइंग अगेन स्वामी वॉज वॉकिंग दैट वे द एंटायर ग्रुप वॉज सिडिंग आई टुक ए पेपर आई रोड डाउन नेम्स आई रोड डाउन थ्री नेम्स स्वामी केम स्वामी सेट ये मी स्वामी मीर पेर लो पेटर डाल लेकर स्वामी यू आर नॉट नेमिंग नाउ please decide one name from this you decide one name is the best way to get the name swami took that paper he looked at paper he looked at me like this he crumpled the paper he threw the paper at me emi buddhunda ivi per la he said dimag nahi hai kya ye naam hai kya then swami then you tell me what is the name that should be there then swami went step one sword emi వీడిని సాయి హృదయ్ అని పిలుస్తామా అందరి హృదయాలలో నివసించేవాడిని కదా ఐఎమ్ ద రెసిడెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ హార్ట్స్ సో లెట్స్ కాల్ దిస్ ఫెలో సాయి హృదయ్ అండ్ హీ వాజ్ నేమ్ సాయి దే స్వామి దెన్ ఆల్ ద మై గ్యాంగ్ యు నో విట్ కేమ్ సెట్ అన్న వాట్ డిడ్ యూ రైట్ అన్న ఐ ఓపెన్ ద స్లిప్ అండ్ పుట్ ఫస్ట్ నేమ్ దట్ ఐ రోడ్ వాజ్ సత్య సాయి రావణ సెకండ్ నేమ్ సత్య సాయి కుంభకర్ణ సత్య సాయి విభీషణ three names i had written my son even today says what if swami had decided one name <laughs> i said how can lord rama decide some name which he doesn't like so luckily it was my fortune that you know that swami decided to so, but today he is happy with that name and that's what he does so i would now move forward and share uh, some experiences that i had the privilege of interacting with certain yogis uh, that i had physically met there is one book uh, sri satya sai and yogis uh, which was written in telugu which i had translated into english and uh, this was uh, released by the books and publication trust there is one incident that i want to share with was with relates to uh, sri sri ravi shankar i know most of you know about the art of uh, living sri sri ravi shankar it so happened that one day there is a gentleman called vsr murthy in hyderabad he called me and said gopi we are going to sri sri ravi shankar's ashram to do an interview on behalf of the svbc channel sri venkateshwara bhakti channel and i want you to accompany you can ask questions in english and i will do that in english i said no way uncle i am not going to come i am associated with satsa organization i am not going to come so he said okay but think about it it's a good opportunity you are not doing anything you are only questioning that's all an interview i said no no then i discussed with my brother and we were discussing my brother said are tu karne kya ja raha hai tu ja ke questions puch raha hai utna hi hai na there's nothing you are not going and falling at his feet or doing anything you can go and try i said no i don't want to do it so next day his personal assistant a youngster called from sri sri ravi shankar's ashram and said brother my name is uh, he said ashwin or something i believe you are coming on sunday evening at 4:30 to meet guruji guruji wanted to me to find out at what time you are arriving so that we send the car to you i said brother i am not coming i have never told anybody i am coming i never told him. no no this is what uh, the information came and then i went back to my brother and said this message came to me my brother said go swami ka naam leke go and see swami in him now what is there you go so i went but i said i will not do the interview i'll just go and see him so we were all seated there the trustees were all there and then some student came running and said guruji is calling you so i went up he has a big bangla out there he was playing with a pet elephant 
and uh, the moment he said ah gopi come 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 i have been waiting to see you i said why are you waiting to see me i don't know i never wanted to come and see you so he took us inside and then uh, there were some discussions that happened <clears throat> so the crux of the discussion is then i asked him some pertinent questions why is the world like this why is there evil ego everything then he said you are not supposed to ask these questions you come from a clan of satyasai organizations you know everything don't try to test me he said i said guruji i am not trying to test you this is what i wanted to ask you and then he said i let me tell you gopi perhaps many of the devotees don't know this truth satya sai is more powerful than what he was in his physical form in the maha samadhi in prashant lilium today he says is more than what he was he is so powerful and also let me tell you he is the sakshat shiva shakti swarupa you guys don't know about it he is a shiva and shakti i am telling you and where do you think the art of living came from do you know that i have been guided by baba all through my life the art of living came up when i learned the art of loving from satya sai baba he said swami taught me the art of loving and that is how art of living came then i told him guru ji then you should come to puttaparthi he said who are you to invite me i said i am a devotee of satya sai invite you don't need to invite me at all it is my rule i have to come and charge myself there that is what he said and he narrated some of the incidents when he was uh, there in prashant lilium and he came to invite uh, swami for his 50th birthday i asked a very stupid question to swami once very stupid of me swami said i said swami i want to ask you a question swami said ye ye me i said oka pichi prashna swami i said well the swami is a pichi this is a mental question swami swami said adugu anni pichi prashna adutho adugu then swami everybody in the world presidents prime ministers kings queens princes everybody is coming why is it that yogis and yoga purushas who are there in the himalayas who are doing so many tapas and everything why is it that those people are not seen here good question right swami looked at me and said pichhi vaadivi he said mad fellow vaallandaru ikkadiki vaste neeku chotu ekkadu undara koochodaniki we all of them come here for darshan where is their place for you to sit down vaalla vaallaki nenu darshanam vaallaki akkade isthanu i give darshan to them in their own places that is what i do he says this is bhagwan somebody tells me i seen swami in himalaya somebody says so this is a beautiful story that goes on <coughs> i have about 10 minutes i will narrate one story uh, this is uh, how protects how he protects his devotees my father had a very big issue with one of the chief ministers of andhra pradesh he was in the headlines every day there was a tug of war the chief minister wanted something to be done my father said no this is not the right way to do it i will not do it i will stick to my virtues this is how it is to be going to be so every day there was an article and my father was third day he was transferred from that posting he was put in another place there also he kicked up trouble from there he post he was post, posted to another place my father got vexed and he said chalo so we took a car me and my father we reached puttaparthi my father was called inside into the room my father went inside ye me sitapati ye maindi what happened swami you know what happened ఏమి ఉత్తరం పెట్టుకుని వచ్చింది దే వాజ్ లెటర్ దట్ స్వామి మై ఫాదర్ వాజ్ కరెక్ట్ స్వామి నేను ఐ వాంట్ టు రిజైన్ ఫ్రమ్ ది ఇండియన్ అడ్మినిస్ట్రేటివ్ సర్వీసెస్ ఐ వాంట్ టు టెల్ యూ అండ్ రిజైన్ స్వామి సెట్ అవునా హిట్ ఈ స్వామి టుక్ ద లెటర్ అండ్ టోర్ ఇట్ ఆఫ్ ఈ సెట్ పిచ్చివాడివి నీలాంటి వాళ్ళు ఉంటేనే వాళ్ళు భయపడతారు పీపుల్ లైక్ యూ విత్ ఎథిక్స్ అండ్ హ్యూమన్ వాల్యూస్ షుడ్ బి దేర్ ఓన్లీ దెన్ దిస్ ఫెలోస్ విల్ బి స్కేర్డ్ ఆఫ్ యూ డోంట్ వరీ అండ్ ఈ సెట్ you have my protection wherever there is tr- truth i will protect swami materialized a locket which has maha kali shiva shakti we are shocking of shakti i have never seen a locket like that in my life swami materialized a lot i am giving you my shakti today take it go fight the chief minister you will win he said and you will, will not believe in 3 days every newspaper there were headlines every day fourth day the cm called my father and said he caught hold of my father's hand and said i will not meddle with you 
you don't meddle with me let's stop here you are a such side devotee i am a such side devotee let's call it quits see the power of swami how he does things so it is very pertinent that all of us have to stick to our value systems kafi log sochte hain yaar ye chalta hai ch kar denge lage ro swami is one person or one phenomenon i would say who will take you to the last step of death you know ab mar jayenge bol ke sochte hain jab aate hain sahte hain main hu na main bhagwan si sachcha hai baba hu main aapke sath hu he turns turns it topsy turvy and i'm sure every one of you have got this beautiful uh, experiences you know the satyasai credit card is something very dear to us so whatever we do there is a bonus there is a plus points there are negative points that actually add to your credit system when good is happening swami takes care of it negative to swami aajkal aisa kar rahe hain swami काफी लोग कहते थे कि अगर आप गलत करो तो आपका नेक्स्ट जन्मा में ऐसा होगा या ऐसा होगा कहते थे बट दीज डेज गॉड इज फिनिशिंग सेटलमेंट अभी कर दे रहे हैं इसी जन्म में कर रहे हैं सो वी नीड टू बी वेरी केयरफुल विद इट आई विल एंड दिस स्टोरी विद एन इंसिडेंट फॉर दोज ऑफ यू हु थिंक दैट स्वामी इज नॉट देयर आफ्टर टू थाउजेंड दिस इज एन इंसिडेंट दैट हैपन विद मी माई पर्सनल लाइफ and uh, it even gives nightmares to me even today i was heading a company called as oliva skin clinics as a ceo and uh, i was traveling with uh, a plastic surgeon dr subramaniam from hyderabad to chicago to buy a robotic hair transplant surgeon surgery machine you must be wondering why is this guy buying it i have hair i had him say hair that time but you know we went there to buy a robotic machine so i was leaving to chicago and suddenly at 8:30 in the night i get a call from one of my friends who is a younger brother very close to me he said uh, gobi bhai i hear that you're going to chicago tomorrow can you do me a small favor i said yeah he said i have some medical samples i want you to hand it over to a friend of mine uh, in uh, it actually had to go to austin so you can post it there and hand it over to them by courier i said okay you bring it now he said no no i'll come in the morning tomorrow i know you're traveling by this british airways flight i'll meet you at the airport i said okay so this gentleman this young boy brought three samples three small polythene bags of medicines i asked him do you have the documents he says yeah these are all the documents these are fda approved everything is in place you keep this with you this is the documents so like a good boy you know <clears throat> i put some in one bag one in another bag and three i was carrying three bags i went and uh, we had a good ride uh, we landed in chicago and um, my doctor was there my colleague was there i told dr subramaniam you pass through the green channel and go and wait for me i will declare this and come because i am carrying some medicines i will just go to the customs and tell them this is the document i'll declare i went to the customs and declared that i showed them one packet i said i am carrying this documents uh-huh. they looked that lady was there she took the documents she looked at it and said sir can i see the sample sir i gave the samples she looked at it then couple of other officers came they looked at it then uh, they said sir these drugs are not permitted into the united states i said what do you mean i said the fda documentations sir these are not the original fda documents these are prototype of fda documents but not the original past fda documents so these are not this is actually drug trafficking into our country sir we will analyze the samples if the samples are true to what you have said you will be arrested immediately i said i am in an alien land i have asked my colleague to be outside and they said you please wait so after an hour they wanted me to wait then i said you know i want to talk to my brother my eldest brother was a, is the head of uh, world bank for africa a united nations officer so i said can i speak to him he said sorry sir we can't give you anything you will have to wait we are analyzing the samples they have asked me to pay 500 dollars i paid that money they were analyzing it they made me sit no water also then after that another five six officers came and they started interrogating me and the way they spoke to me i am telling you no one in the world should listen to the way they spoke to me it was disgusting disgusting the way they actually treated me not less than a criminal and uh, i was feeling very very bad then i said no then they took me to a very large interrogation room 
maybe half the size of this hall and I was made to sit there. Ten officers were interrogating me. Then they asked me all pertinent questions. I asked for water. They said, no water, nothing. We will decide. They said, the drugs that you brought in it matches with the documentation. These are samples, drug samples, which are banned. And this is drug trafficking. You are arrested under the act. Now the further decision will be taken by the captain. He's going to come. So I was waiting in that room all alone, not knowing what it is. So <clears throat> after some time, one lady came and said, hey, here, listen to me. You're not going to get out of this, let me tell you. The captain who is going to come, he's, a, he's of Pakistan origin. He hates Indians. He will not let you go. This was the scenario. I said, can I speak to some attorney? You must be having an attorney or somebody who can I speak to. He said, only after the captain comes, you can speak. Nothing. Then I was made to wait. Then this captain came, a short guy, Mustafa Iqbadsta. So he came and said, oh, so you are the guy who's bringing drugs into my country? And he started off bombarding me. You know. And I said, no, captain, listen to me. I am telling you the truth. I belong to this. At that point of time, I said, sir, I belong to the Satyasai Seva organizations. I'm a devotee of Satyasai Baba. I'm speaking the truth. I brought the samples from a friend to be given to them. I have. He said, who is that friend? What is the company's name? I didn't know. Then he said, do you have the address of the person whom you're sending it? There was a pouch. Is the pouch is there in that cover? They have taken it for analysis. I didn't know the company that where, it, where I have to send it. Imagine my situation. I had nothing. I said, I was telling him, I'm pleading, I'm, I'm a Satsai Baba devotee, I was telling him. I started crying. I started crying. And I didn't know what to do. I said, I'm telling you, sir, I don't know if you have seen Satsai Baba. I'll tell you, I'll show you a picture of his, I said. In my suitcase, you know, <clears throat> and I told him, no, I have two more packets of samples, sir. And I pulled out from the second box and gave it to him. So, you're carrying more, is it? This is a offense, you know, this is going to be very harsh on you, he was telling me. I said, I have, even in the third bag, sir, I'll pull it out. In the bag that I was, suitcase that I was carrying, I was carrying a set of books in a brown wrapper, which I kept it at the bottom of the, at the bottom of the suitcase, neatly wrapped. That was a book that we released from Prashanti Society in Hyderabad. Uh, the book was uh, The Splendor of Satya Sai. Swami's hand is like this, the picture is like this. So, it so happened, I opened the suitcase to pull out the third packet. As I open, the suitcase opens like this. One book just comes up like this. The wrapper is open. It starts at the back of my suitcase like this. And that Captain Mustafa is looking at me. He's looking at that book. He's looking at me. He said, who is this guy? He said. I said, I've been telling you all through the ride, this is Satya Sai. At that point of time, I didn't even realize that the book was at the bottom. How did it come up? Upar kyo? Open, open kon kyo ya? Kon lagaya pe? Then I was, I said, I've been talking to you, Captain. This is Satya Sai Baba I'm talking about. Who is this weirdo? He said. I said, this is what I'm talking about. I belong to his organization. I was telling him, I was trying to look for that card, you know, which Brother Sundar had given an ID card. That those days, you know, I, I couldn't find that also, unfortunately. I was telling. Then he was looking at it. Then suddenly he said, hey, did this guy do any medical camp in Pakistan? He asked me. Imagine my plight at that point of time. I'm half dead. I'm crying. And the captain is asking me, did Swami do a medical camp in Pakistan? Swami Pakistan mein kare, Timbuktu mein kare, Kisgali mein medical camp kare, mujhe kya pata hai? I was I said, I don't know. No, no, no. Somebody told me that there's this guy, weirdo guy, some people came and did a camp in Pakistan. And my grandmother also had a, you know, had an eye operation. They've done something. I said, sir, I don't know about it, but this. He looked at me, smiled and said, he called his officers. This guy is speaking the truth. Let him go. Imagine in a second, split second, he said, this guy is speaking the truth. Let him go. He called two officers. He said, take the samples, go to that incinerator, dump them in that incinerator, put it into fire. He said, take him to that counter, get a ticket issued. My colleague had already left. And there were frantic calls happening from India to Chicago, 
Ganga, my wife is being called and said, Gopi is not seen anywhere. They were worried. My wife is saying, don't worry about him. He'll come out wherever he is. He'll come out. Don't worry about him. This Balasubramanyam was very, very disturbed. He was coming for the, to the US for the first time. He didn't know where to go. He was waiting. Ultimately, he went, took the flight. He, he went to Denver. And I was standing there. So the police came, took me to the counter, bought me a ticket for the next day, took me to the hotel, put me up in the hotel and said, if you have any problem to reach to the airport, please call us. We'll drop you at the airport. Ye kon kar sakta hai? Who can do it? And that is why I call him my best friend. He's pulled me out and my family from umpteen things. And my entire family is, you know, indebted to him. My eldest brother, who is an actually advisor to the Central Vigilance Commission now, who was the principal chief commissioner of income tax. He was poisoned by his own attender with arsenic. He lost both his limbs, hands. He was almost on the deathbed. He wanted to come and die in Puttaparthi. Swami said, don't worry. He metalized something and gave it. He'll be all right. He was on leave two years and he was promoted. Can you imagine an Indian Revenue Services officer being promoted on leave? And Swami is telling, he put a sign chase now to Manmohan Singh just to sign his file. Next day, three days later, the order comes signed by Manmohan. So, brothers and sisters, we are so fortunate. You know, what kind of you know, we are blessed to be contemporaries of Sai. And those of you youngsters, you know, a lot of youngsters have not seen Swami physically. You have a great blessing. physically Swami ko aisa dekhlo, jaisa Rama ko dekhto, Jesus ko dekhto, Krishna ko dekhto, lagero. And tell, I'll tell you, this Bhagwan is the coolest person or phenomenon that anyone can actually see in your lifetime and Swami has been so graceful you know in all our lives so I can end or have one more two minutes yeah so <clears throat> there are so many stories you know I've told but the last story that I want to talk to about is a very interesting story because youngsters are there I want to narrate this with this I will end my talk uh, it so happened that during this 70th birthday our entire group of about 300 boys from Hyderabad we were in Puttaparthi, rendering seva in the canteen for about 45 days. So most of us, you know, after the birthday was over, didn't even have darshan and we left because we had jobs to do. Swami came that day and uh, he asked how many are there. We said, Swami, 105 are there. Swami blessed all of us. And he went back and told Mr. B.V. Raman Rao. I don't know how many of you know. Sri B.V. Raman Rao was the National Services Coordinator, a very ardent follower of Swami from Hyderabad. Very blessed who could gauge Swami very fast, you know. So, Swami called Raman Rao uncle and said, I am very upset. Go and tell the Hyderabad boys that they came and did seva here, but they didn't come and see me. They should have come for darshan. Tell them that darshan is as important as seva. So, brothers and sisters, please don't hesitate to go to Puttaparthi. Lot of people say, Main apne dil mein, apne room mein, apne mandir mein Swami ko dekh leta hon. Swami is present here, I know it very well. Wo pura ek, one part of the story. But going to your mother's place is something that you should do. Please take the best opportunity to go. The easiest time that you can go, go and see Swami. If you are not doing that, you are doing a very big mistake. So Swami sent this message to us. So we, he came and... Uh, thrashed us. I am sure that some of you who know when Mr. Raman Rao uncle speaks how it is. I think Nimish Bhai knows it very, very well. So, Swami banged us. Uh, he said, Ye ishnaru, ita ye ishnaru. So Then we said, okay, Swami is upset with us. The best thing that we should do now is go back to Swami and stay there in Puttaparthi and only do darshan. So, 40 of us, we went to Puttaparthi and we stayed, took accommodation, Subhe Khana, darshan karna, come back and sleep. This was a routine. And the boys were very used to doing seva in Puttaparthi. Kuch na kuch mauka leke, koi kuch seva karna chulchte hai. First day ho gaya. Second day morning darshan is also over. Then some of the senior boys and games, Anna, kya hai anna ye ghar pe kya room mein so ja rahe anna? Khana, peena, so re, kya kar rahe anna? Kuch seva kar de anna? Hey, chup. So jao, darshan karo, so jao. This was the command that we had. 
two days passed like that the boys were very very angry with us third day i remember me vice shrinivas and another brother uday we were walking down from the shed from the last shed as we were walking from the north seven suddenly we felt a stench you know smell dirty smell and we went and saw what was we saw that the bathrooms were a little dirty and you know they were clogged then uh, i told boss boss soliye bahut kare chalo kaam karte hain bahar gaye we went outside bought brushes acid phenyl everything we went to the room and said come on get up there's a lot of work to do so we started cleaning the public toilets in prashant leelam at 8:30 the rule was will your bathroom shine better than me so it was a competition the bathroom should glitter yours is better and mine is better so we started cleaning all the bathrooms we were cleaning the last set of bathrooms near the shed uh, bar the human value shed at the last then a red maruti car i think that is the first maruti car presented to swami by the maruti group chirinjira uncle and chakravarti uncle come in that car so they get down chakravarti uncle is in the car chirinjira comes and he says hey junior sitapati you come here he says he knows my father very well he didn't know my name so he said junior sitapati you come here i went running he said what are you doing i said uncle we are cleaning bathrooms uncle he said uh, who is the leader of this group well that was a tricky question you know being from a bureaucratic family i knew there was trouble so immediately i realized that uday was 7 months elder to me i said uncle that fellow there that black fellow uday is the leader uncle he said hey you come here so uday came running so when he came running he said are you the leader then uday looked at me like this i wala bol na so what are you doing he said uncle we are cleaning the bathrooms he said who gave you the permission chirinjo uncles he said who gave you the permission this fellow he should respond to an elderly person he laughed at him <laughs> what uncle you are telling and chirinjo uncle got angry i said why are you laughing at me uncle what are you telling me uncle this is my home uncle in my home if i have to clean bathrooms should i take anybody's permission is there a necessity to take permission uncle he said right answer for us it is a very right answer chirinjar uncle got annoyed and he said and he went off wo jaane ke baad usko bola are tu kya bol diya boss tu to bol diya abhi ye chote saab ja ke bade saab ko bolenge bhagwan sri satsa baba is rama avatar krishna avatar all avatars put together he will listen tomorrow we are we are gone swami comes in the morning and swami mm, 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 he is muttering something and he has come em ji em chestri swami em led hmm pondi he then he sent us into the interview room in the interview room we were all sitting then swami said what did you guys do yesterday afternoon this was the question that swami then immediately he said uh, swami bathroom lo kadiginam swami we clean the bathrooms immediate question yavar ichinaru permission same word chirinjira xerox bhagwan is asking who gave you the permission we all looked at uday baskar ade bol beta abhi bol abhi bol na so he laughed swami atta jeptare and swami what are you telling swami it is not the permission swami that is important you gave us the opportunity to clean swami he said and swami was so happy i am telling you when that word came out <laughs> swami was so happy and he said chala santosham santosham then you know i was sitting right beside him and uh, swami was playing with his hand and suddenly something came in his hand and i was wondering what it is swami just turned his hand and he swami there was a beautiful diamond of this size then swami has a hey, empty rai di so everybody said swami this is diamond swami diamond ah diamond and telsu em diamond do somebody said kohenur somebody said le 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 do then swami said this is the original nose stud of kanyaka parmeshwari the kanyakumari temple the original nose diamond swami explained how it used to dazzle in the night and warn ships and all these things and he said this has been looted and it is in the new south wales museum 
I put the guards to sleep and brought it to show it to you guys. Swami says. We were very happy. Then, you know, we were all wondering, you know, what it is. And then Swami suddenly looked and said, Amy, choose the wa. Swami said, do you want to see? Swami, yes, Swami. Then he said, Swami gave it. Then, you know, I was holding it. Then Swami asked, why should you ask Uday? Everybody would touch it. Then he said, you, do you know the value of this diamond? Then Swami said, this is, today, I'm talking of 1998. Today, the value of this diamond is 30 crores, he said. 30 crores. And Swami said, I am in a very happy mood today. I want to gift it to somebody. Swami says, and everybody was alert. So there were all youngsters there. Then Swami said, who wants this? Everybody raised his hand. Swami, give it to me, give it to me. Then Swami looked at one boy at the corner there. I said, hey, what is your name? He said, Swami Srikant. Hey, very disciplined boy. Very good. Catch, Pratawa, catch. Swami said, will you catch? Huh? He said, he was happy. 30 crore diamond free aara, yaar. Huh? Pali bar darshan kwa 30 crores aaya. Swami said, okay, catch. He threw it like this. It just went into thin air. Poof, it vanished. It vanished. Now, then after that, Swami said a beautiful thing. He said, now you guys tell me, boys, you tell me, what is the greatest reward <coughs> that God, and he showed himself, what is the greatest reward that God bestows on a good seva worker? Ek achha seva worker ku Bhagwan kis tarah ka gift deta hai? Swami showed himself and said, what does God give? We were talking about this. Swami said, no, 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 no. Then Swami, we said, Swami, you tell us. Then he said, shall I tell you? The greatest gift that I give to a good worker is that I give you another opportunity to serve. I give you another opportunity to serve. Imagine how many opportunities we would have got as on date, each one of us. Scores of them. Every day you might be getting at least about 15-20 opportunities in your life. How many of you grab them? Even helping mother in the kitchen, Swami says it's seva. Asking somebody, are you okay? How, is your, how are you doing? Is seva. In fact, Swami once said, even when you look at a person and smile at him, Swami says it's seva. Because, you know, you are showing him that you are happy. Imagine the Lord has come and told us so many beautiful stories. And he has lived himself as an example to all of us. What more do we need? This is the greatest thing. And Swami, in that beautiful form, as that poem goes, Pala Bugala Vadu. Pala Bugalu, he's got those beautiful cheeks. Pala Bugala Vadu. Chekili Machagala Vadu. He's got a beautiful mole on his head. Chekili Machagala Vadu. Pala Bugala Vadu. Chekili Machalagala Vadu. Pannaga Sayanudu. Ungarala Jutugala Vadu. Koter Mukugala Vadu. One who makes you desireless. Pagadala pedavula galavadu. His lips are like beautiful pearls. Pagadala pedavula galavadu. Panchama shruti galavadu. When you listen to his voice, it's like the Saptaswaras. Panchama shruti galavadu. Dharani Talli Vinapamavida on the request of Mother Earth. Divinundi Bhuvike Chinchina Purushottamudu. The one who has arrived from heaven onto the earth. Atade Manaprana Mitrudu. He is the only friend, your lifelong friend. Atade Sanatana Saradudu Manasatya Sai Shudu Swami bless us all. Make us worthy instruments in your mission. 
even if we leave you swami please don't leave us and we are sure that you will never leave us please continue to bless us and give us more and more opportunities to do seva and get closer to you jai sai ram